Welcome to part two of our free Slice Your Pain mini course. If you haven't yet watched part one, click the link in the description of this video to check that video out first. All right, let's jump in and build out this Slicer Pain. The first thing we need to do is create our margins, and we're going to do that with temporary shapes. So go to Insert, Shape, Rectangle. Go to Format, Shape, Style, turn the border off. Then go to General, Properties, and change the height to 20. Take that shape, drag it over here to our background. Zoom in, and we want to make the length of this shape the same length of our slicer pane background. So right there looks good for me, and you can see my width is 378. Now I'm going to take that shape and use my up arrow keys to move it all the way to the very top. And I'll stop when I can't see the background peeking out at the top. So right there looks good. Now I'm going to duplicate that shape. Control C, Control V, and we're going to drag it to the bottom. Use my down arrow keys, and we'll stop right there. And then I'm going to select the top one, go to Format, Align, Left. Let's zoom back to 100%. So we have our horizontal margins now. Next thing we need to do is create our vertical margins for the left and the right side. So let's go to Insert, Shape, Rectangle. Do the same thing. Turn Border Off, then go to General, Properties. Now for this one, we're going to adjust the width. And instead of 20, I'm going to go with 25 pixels. So we're going to have a little extra margin on the left and the right side. I'm going to take that, drag it over here, I'm going to zoom in. We're going to make sure that's left aligned with that top shape. So format, align left. And then we're going to select that shape, manually adjust the height, and then do the same at the bottom. And we're going to take that shape, duplicate it. We can select the bottom horizontal shape, select our new vertical shape, then go to Format, Align Right. We can also align to the bottom. Let's zoom back to 100%. Let's go up to Insert, Button, Blank Button. Drag the button right over here, and then go to General, Properties. We're going to make the height 26, and the width is going to be 35. Make sure under Padding, it is zero on all four sides. Background should already be off. Let's switch over to button settings, shape. We're going to go with a rounded rectangle. And for rounded corners, we'll leave it at 25%. Let's go to style under the default state. We're going to turn icon off. We're going to turn fill on. We're going to open it up. We're going to go with the color white, 0% transparency. And we're actually going to insert an X image in here. So what you're going to do is open up PowerPoint and go to icons, search for an X, select it. You can leave the color as black. You're going to right click, save it as a picture. I'm naming mine icon underscore close and then click save. Once you do that, you're going to browse for that image. Click open. Let's open up border. We'll go with the hex code of E6, E6, E6 with a one pixel width. Let's click out and take a look at that. That looks good. Let's select it again, open up style and change it to on hover. We're going to scroll down, open up fill, and we're going to change the fill color to the hex code of F3, F2, F1. Now, when we hover over it, we can't see that color yet because we need to turn on action and we're going to select bookmark, and we'll leave it as none just for now. Now we can see that hover effect when we hover over it. Let's zoom in a little more, and we're going to drag that button right to the top right corner of our margins. Once you do that, you can zoom back out to 100%. Let's go ahead and insert another blank button. Drag this one over here. Go to General, Properties. We're going to make the height 63 and we're going to make the width 130. Open up padding. The left side padding is going to be 12 pixels and we're going to go with an 11 pixel for the rest of the sides. Switch over to button settings. Open up style. Make sure you're on the default state and turn text on. We're going to type the word filters. 
going to change the font to Sago UI Bold and go to 16. Let's change the color to 333333. We're going to left align. And then under padding, we're going to change the left side padding to 40. And we're going to zero out the top, zero out the bottom, and zero out the right. Let's scroll down and open up icon. We're going to change from blank to custom. Then we're going to open up Microsoft PowerPoint and do the same thing we did before by searching for a filter icon. And we're going to leave the color as black. We're going to save it. I'm going to name this one icon filters black. We're going to go browse for that new icon and click open. For icon placement under custom, we're going to leave the horizontal alignment as left. And then for the padding, we're going to go with the 10 for the left and zero for the rest of the sides. The icon size, we're going to go with the 20. Then you're going to take that button and you're going to overlap the blue temporary shape margins go right to the top left corner. And that leads me to my pro UX UI tip number four. Check your alignments. We zoom in here and insert a line. Drag it over here and let's place it right above the X in the close button. If you look closely, you can see that I intentionally aligned this filter button with that X, the top of the filter icon, as well as the L in filters, perfectly aligns with that close button. So these little details matter. It's what separates professional UX UI design visuals from the rest. Get rid of that, zoom back to 100%. Now let's click on that top horizontal bar and copy it. We're gonna drag it right to the bottom of the X button. So if we were to zoom in, we're gonna to be touching the bottom of that button on the right hand side. Let's zoom back to 100%. And I'm just gonna right align it with the right hand side vertical bar. Next thing we're going to do is insert a normal slicer. So I'm just gonna click on the slicer visual. We're gonna to go to data. And then in the search box, we're gonna type month year. Once you find it, you're going to drag it into the field box. Go to General, Properties. We're going to make the height 80, and the width's going to be 328. Let's open up Padding, and we're going to change the padding to 10 on all four sides. Open up Effects, turn Background Off. Then turn Visual Border On. Click in the color, More Colors. We're going to change the hex code to F3, F2. To F1. We're going to go with a 15 pixel rounded corner. We can leave the width as a one pixel. Let's switch over to visual settings, open up slicer settings, and then under style, we're going to change this to a drop down. Let's drag it over here. Doesn't have to be perfect just yet. Open up selection and make sure multi select is on. Next, we're going to open up the slicer header. And we're going to change the text to the word period. Also notice how I have a little icon here that I pasted in. So where I got that was from a website called Emojipedia.org. Simply went there, typed the word date, and clicked enter. When I found the icon I wanted, which is right here, I simply copied it. And then I pasted it to the left-hand side of the word period. Let's change the font to Sago UI Semibold. And we're going to go with the size of 10 and the font color of 333333. 333. All right, let's scroll down and open up values. And we're going to change the size of the values to 9. And we'll go with the Sago UI. Font color, same one. We'll go with that hex code of 333333. 333. Let's lower the padding to 3 pixels. And the padding, by the way, is affecting what we see when we click on that drop down. If I go to a four, notice how we can see that little box at the very bottom. So I'm intentionally going with three pixels so our view is cleaner. All right, so now let's take this drop down slicer and we're gonna drag it right to the top and stop when we hit the bottom of that temporary shape. 
And it's really easy to do because you can simply use those red horizontal and vertical lines. All right, now we're going to take the temporary shape that's right above that slicer, and we're going to left click and hold and drag it right to the bottom of that slicer. Let's go back and click on that slicer, press Control C, Control V to copy, and we're going to drag the new slicer right below that shape. We're going to go to Add Data to Your Visual. We're going to switch this to a button slicer. We're going to go to Data here, and we're going to swap out Month Year with Product Category. So I'm going to type Category, and under the Product Table, not the KPI table, the Product one, we're going to drag in Category. Then we'll go to Format Your Visual, General, Properties. We're going to make the Height 88 won't have to change the width, open up padding, change the left side to 15, the top will stay as 10, the right side we're going to go with 15, and the bottom we're going to switch to 20. Let's scroll down and open up title, and we're going to change the text of the title to category. And again, notice how I added that little emoji. Same thing, just go back to that Emojipedia website, type the word coffee, Find it, copy it, and then paste it in here. Let's go ahead and change the font to Sago UI Semi-Bold. We're going to lower the size to 10. We'll go with our default color black here. We're going to keep scrolling down. Open up Spacing. Change it to Custom Spacing. And we're going to up the spacing to 10 pixels. Let's switch over to Visual Settings. Open up Slicer Settings. We're going to turn single select off. Open up shape. We're going to go with a rounded rectangle. For the corners, we're going to go with a five pixel. Let's keep scrolling down and open up layout. We're going to leave it as grid. For the max rows, though, we're going to switch it to one. And then for columns, we're going to go with a two because we only have two categories here within this particular field. Turn custom spacing on. And for space between rows, we're going to go with a 5, and then space between columns will go to 5. Let's keep scrolling down, open up Call Out Values. We're going to change the font to Sago UI. We're going to lower it to a 9, go with our default black, and we'll keep scrolling down, turn Label on, open it. For space between label, we're going to go with 0, and then you're going to turn Label off. Keep scrolling down. Let's open up buttons. Let's change the padding to custom. The left side padding is going to be 10. The top's going to be 5. The right's going to be 5. And the bottom's going to be 5. Let's open up border. We're going to leave border on and change it to E6, E6, E6. Next, we're going to open up fill. We're going to make sure it's on. And we're going to go with the color white. All right, let's scroll back up, and under Buttons, we're going to change the state to Hover. Then we're going to scroll back down, and then under Fill, we're going to change the fill color to F3, F2, F1. Let's scroll back up, change the state to Selected. Let's go back down. We're going to change the fill color to E, F, F, A, F9. In the border, we're going to have to adjust one more time here. So we're going to go with E6, E6, E6. So you see as I'm hovering over here, working. Notice though that when we have our selected, the text changes to white. So we have to adjust that real quick. So what we need to do is scroll up here to values. And then under call out values, we need to change the state to selected. And then you're going to change the color to your default black. All right, there's one more thing we have to do with this button slicer. We're going to scroll down, open up images. We're going to scroll down. We're going to turn ignore padding off. We're going to scroll up and for the image fit, we're going to go with normal. For the position, we're going to go with left. Then we're going to scroll back up and change the state to select it. Next, you're going to go up here to the top right and search for a field called selected. It's going to be in the region table. You're going to drag it to the add data and it'll default to first selected. All right, now let's test this out here. 
All right, so we can see that it's showing up on the left-hand side. I actually want it on the right-hand side. So I'm going to quickly go to state, switch it to all, go back, switch the position to right, and go back, switch it to selected. Now let's try it. All right, so that looks good. All right, so we're going to stop right here. That concludes part two. To continue along, please check out part three. You'll find a link in the description within this video.